welcome to Googleicious for all the Google goodness that we can pack inside of a show each week. And yes, we'll talk a little bit about Samsung and Apple later in the show. But first, we know there have been rumors for almost the past two years plus that Amazon would be releasing a smartphone of their own. And Boy Genius Report has finally obtained a new image of Amazon's smartphone that reveals its full design for the first time. Now this might look similar to the design of an iPhone or a Nexus phone or something in between, but rumors have pointed to this phone featuring a unique glasses-free 3D interface that uses four front-facing cameras, one on each corner that you can see from these prototype images that will facilitate a 3D effect tracking the user's face and eyes in relationship to the phone's display. Now the phone will also take advantage of this as much as possible using the effects in special lock screen wallpapers, icons, the user interface, and even in their Maps application. We're also expecting Amazon to have its own brand wireless plan, tentatively called Prime Data, that will reportedly use AT&T as the carrier, but give users exclusive free access to Amazon content. Now the phone is expected to be coming later this summer, with some reports claiming we'll see it as early as June. All right, the battle between Samsung and Apple round two is finally over, and a verdict was reached rewarding Apple $119.6 million in damages. Now, that's significantly less than the $2 billion they were seeking, claiming Samsung infringed on their patents. Now, the jury did find that Samsung infringed on Apple's slide to unlock feature and a few others like transforming text, like an email address, into an actionable link. Real exciting stuff. Now, the court also ruled that Apple had infringed on some of Samsung's own property and awarded the Korean giant $158,000 in damages. The Cupertino Fruit guys were found guilty of infringing on a Samsung patent that deals with recording and storing digital images and audio. Again, very exciting stuff. So, after you subtract lawyer fees and gas money to drive to court, this ongoing legal battle has really become a complete waste of time for everyone. All right, in Google News, Google has updated their Google search app for Android to remember where you parked your car. Super helpful. Now, Google Now cards remain loaded if you lose your internet connection. Some malls are now gaining indoor map directory, so I can find the nearest Auntie Annie's almond pretzel. That thing is good. And if you have done a previous search for a product online, Google will show you a Now card that tells you if a store nearby carries any of those recent products you searched for. Creepy and cool at the same time, unless for some reason, a man thong shows up. It's very nice. All right, website teardown.com has finally dismantled a pair of Google Glass to do a breakdown of the cost of the components packed inside of it. And according to their findings, the parts inside of Glass's total value comes to $79.78. That's just a difference of $1,420.22 of its retail price if you even get an invitation to buy one. Come on, Google, don't be evil. <laughs> now, a Google spokesperson called it completely wrong, but didn't elaborate on the cost breakdown. And sure, the teardown isn't factoring in the R&D to build this, but at a rough estimate of just under 80 bucks, couldn't you get it down to maybe $1,000 for new explorers? Now, if you have a pair right now, it might feel like you got ripped off a little or a lot, but it's also a great indicator that they'll be able to offer a more affordable version down the road if and when they come to the mainstream market. And the Googs also announced a few updates to Glass. Backing up your photos and videos can take up a lot of bandwidth, and now you have the option for it to back up only over Wi-Fi or with your current data connection. You can now clear all your photos and videos in one swipe to free up storage, and if you receive a phone call, the audio will stay routed to your phone and not go through Glass. Also, Google Shopping is expanding after a successful pilot in San Francisco over the past year. West Los Angeles and Manhattan are now part of Google's Shopping Express program for same-day delivery from local stores like Target, Walgreens, Whole Foods, and more. And in some quick phone news, Evlix has posted a picture of the new lineup of ATC One Mini 2s in all metallic colors, a little easier to hold with the same design and most of the same features. Evleaks also posted that the full-size ATC One M8 will be shipping in red, blue, and pink. It's possible that each color corresponds to the different carriers. Verizon is red, AT&T is blue, and T-Mobile is pink. And Sprint announced their own Harman Kardon exclusive version of the M8 that refines the phone's audio output. And guys and gals, do you remember that Pokemon April Fool's game Google threw into their Maps app? Well, according to multiple sources, Google is sending out a reward that's a physical item for people who found and captured 
all 151 Pokemon. They've told respondents that it will take four to six weeks to receive their award, and a valuable lesson can really be learned from this. Do something completely worthless and meaningless in your life, and one day, it might be rewarded. All right, guys, that's going to do for this week. Email us at googlelicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next week for some more of that Googlelicious. Googlelicious.